Hello and welcome to another painting session. Today, as I'm working away on a new series of paintings, I wanted to share some thoughts around the subjects of making the artwork you dream of making, the importance of sometimes taking the long way around, and some of the challenges and learning points I've been noticing from the paintings I make with you today. If you're new here, my name is Orla and I make videos to share my painting processes thoughts on creativity and artwork that celebrate my love for nature, landscape and the outdoors. Welcome to my channel. The title and subject matter of this video, Finding an Art Style, was inspired by this very painting session I'm sharing with you now. Not to give too many spoilers for the video, but the work I made on camera was missing something and through the experimentation, I was able to figure out another few pieces of the puzzle towards finding my art style. I'll share with you the key prompts I asked myself to find the answers I needed throughout this video, in case you'd like to take them forwards the next time you feel stuck in your own painting. I'd like to give some context behind the work that I'm making on screen today. At the moment, I'm working on creating a new series of paintings inspired by my adventures outside. I've been gathering textures, marks, colours and shapes from drawing sessions outdoors by both land, water and sea. I'm still in the early stages of this project, which I'm documenting and sharing from start to finish here on YouTube. So stay tuned to watch this collection develop in the coming months. Today, my paintings are all about practice. I've deliberately set myself a long deadline for this collection of paintings so that I can go deeper with the experimentation and push my work forwards. In the work I make today, I'm focusing solely on the process of painting, looking at patterns, colours and materials and how they all interact. I've set myself the challenge of pulling visual elements from my sketchbooks, memories, and past works on paper to inspire the work that I make today. I really love looking back at older work to understand my own taste better and see if there are any reoccurring themes, colours, visual motifs and ideas that I can continue. From these pieces I selected to reference, the things that I felt drawn back to were the colours, the heavy use of pattern, contrasts of textures and the reoccurring motifs of circles, scribbles and figures. I like to lay these out when I'm working sometimes, so that I can match a colour or take an idea and put it into my current paintings with ease. I've decided to work on two different sizes of paper today, playing with a beautiful heavyweight handmade paper. It's one that I'm not that familiar with, so today I wanted to try out various materials and processes to see how it all interacts. I decided to underpaint the smaller group with acrylic to work on top of and leave the other larger papers as it is with the raw paper and see how the colours of watercolour, ink and acrylic paints layer up or soak into it. Part of my experimentation today was to compare the impact of working on top of a solid opaque colour versus raw paper or very transparent washes of colour. I also got given this calligraphy pen and pot of ink, and I was curious to see the kinds of marks and textures that I could make with it on both wet and dry paper. I've got to say that I love the contrasts this ink can make between big blooms and incredibly fine scratchy lines. Ink as a medium seems to lend itself so beautifully to organic and wonky marks, the naturally echo elements of landscape. I'm thinking that I need to get my hands on a few more colours of acrylic ink and play with this some more later on. I wanted to talk in this video a little bit about making the art that you dream of. The dreams of work linked to personal taste, work like the artists that we admire or aspire to. Because today I realised that I might have got a little caught out by one of my dreams, and only through trying something out, giving it a go, 
I came to the realization that it might not be the right path to take moving forwards. For a long time, I've been dreaming or striving to make fully visually abstract work. I originally fell in love with painting through artists like Wilhelmina Barnes Graham and Helen Frankenthaler. Their expansive and immersive abstracts have stayed in my mind ever since I first saw them. Understanding personal taste and what you enjoy as a viewer and as an artist is such a fascinating process. I was reminded today that they can be two separate things. It's funny how you can aspire to an outcome and when you arrive at it, realize that maybe it wasn't what you really want. I don't know if you found this in your own work before. It's certainly a really important part of the process, trying out different processes and styles to find where you fit and what resonates with you. And I am so glad that I really pushed myself in this direction today. In terms of finding style, I think learning more about your own taste and aesthetic is a really good place to start. Part of this is looking at a wide range of art and learning to see what elements that you like and also what you don't, because knowing what you don't and why that is, is just as important. I was reminded today that personal taste in aesthetic doesn't necessarily reflect what it is that we like to create personally. That is found through lots of trial and error, like I am exploring today. It's about pushing the boundaries and trying things out in different ways. Sometimes we can only know what we are looking for when we see it or feel it while we're making. There are so many elements of our personal taste to uncover. If you'd like to explore your own personal taste a little bit more, here are a few things to look out for or research later on. We've got the most obvious, our aesthetic taste. The things that we see that light us up, that make us feel something. This can be other artists, but it might also be interiors, food, architecture, textiles. Then there is the materials and the processes. Are we drawn to artists that work in particular mediums? Is it mixed media? Is it 2D or 3D? Do the artists that you love move between many different mediums and that's what resonates with you? It's definitely important to do this bit through both looking and observing and trying the materials out for yourself. That word I mentioned there, observation, it leads me on to our next point. At the beginning of this video, I listed out elements from my past work that resonated with me in the moment. But you see, in that list, I actually missed out one of the key parts of my art making. And looking back now, I can see that it's the very thing that's missing in the work. Within my personal paintings, although they are mostly abstract, I love to add in nods to visual references. There's always some kind of visual tie to the source of inspiration. That might just be a line, a colour choice that brings it back to its roots. But there's always something there. And by admitting some kind of visual reference in these paintings, I discovered that that's a really important layer for me to bring meaning, context, scale and perspective. And now I know that these are really important elements to keep exploring in my future paintings. When I critique my work like this in these videos, I hope it's clear that I'm not saying that these are things which other people should be doing or applying to their own artworks. It's just a review and a reflection of my own personal work and where I'm at and how I view it. And I'm not in any way prescribing that other people should be thinking these things about their work or applying them in the same way. I think this process of observing what does and doesn't feel good when you're painting is half of the battle when you're finding an art style. Learning to be honest with myself about how I feel when I make work has been a very important part of my own development in understanding the work that I make and how I work. 
being conscious of what hits home and resonates with me in the work that I make whilst I'm making it is how I figure out the next steps in my paintings. What to try again, what to remove from my process or what I want to learn next. Taking a minute during or at the end of a painting session just to note down a couple of bullet points of things that you've enjoyed, things that haven't worked, materials you've loved or hated can be a really effective way just to get it out of your head and so when you come back to the studio next time you've got a few more pointers to work from. I've got more tips coming up shortly on finding style in this video, but first I wanted to say a really big thank you to everyone supporting my channel through watching, interacting and sharing. I really appreciate the YouTube community that we're building. I'd also love to say a huge thank you to the Outdoor Sketchbook Collective, my Patreon members. Your support and genuine enthusiasm alongside conversations on Patreon really supports the work that I make and the community that we're building. Thank you. If you're interested in learning more in depth about intuitive painting, exploring the natural world through art or connecting with other artists to learn together, I share tutorials and host live workshops over on my Patreon page, the Outdoor Sketchbook Collective. There are three tiers to take part in. The first tier is called Tips Jar. If you enjoy my videos here on YouTube and would love to help support my channel even more whilst receiving an exclusive monthly blog post. In Studio Guides, you get access to one monthly PDF tutorial. These written guides distill my processes and are easy to reference and come back to time and time again within your own studio sessions. The last tier is called Studio Play, and this includes a monthly group video call where I share live demonstrations and workshops. It's a lovely space to chat, ask questions and share ideas live with other artists around the world. These calls have become a real highlight of my month. They are always recorded to watch back afterwards in case you can't make it or you'd like to watch it again. On top of the meetup, there is one exclusive workshop filmed a month to help inspire ideas and explore new processes, materials and techniques. In addition, you get access to the previous tier's benefits too. It's important to note when you join a Patreon learning tier, you get access to all previous month's learning materials too. And all tiers get you access to the community chats, where we share what we are working on, ask questions, bounce ideas around and learn from one another. Now let's get back to the video. I think practice is the most obvious element in finding an art style. Every time I find a texture, a colour, a new material I like, I practice using it over and over in different variations and iterations, like I am today. Practicing how far you can push and use these materials, the colours, the exercises and ideas over and over will mean that they can very naturally show up in your work without you having to think too much about them. Before long, you'll see a motif show up in a week a month or a year down the line, and all of those marks and textures and colour choices are what makes up part of your style or creative voice. If you've not guessed by now, I love working across many paintings at once. As an exercise, I find this really useful to see how colour, mark and composition vary across many works. Working across multiple paintings like this all at once is my favourite way to be able to test new ideas, try out different colour combinations and all sorts of different experimentation. If you've not given this a way of working a go, I really recommend it as a way to test quickly what you like and what you don't, and it might help you take another step towards finding your own creative voice. Thank you.
I often have this phrase, do less but better, in my head. I think doing less in general is another one of the creative keys in unlocking a personal style. By doing less, I really mean working within and deliberately setting limitations. Working confidently and expressing yourself is about being really familiar with your favourite materials and processes. I think picking one or two materials to learn, limiting how many colours you use and what surfaces you work on will let you try things out and experiment without getting totally overwhelmed. This is certainly key when I'm working on multiple paintings at once and practising different painting exercises. Through setting limitations and slowly working through variables, you can uncover what resonates and stop using what doesn't. It's these visual limitations that go towards defining a creative style and make your work more recognisable. Learning to paint is as much about materials and processes and techniques as it is about learning how to see or how you see the world and expressing your own individual lens. We are all drawn to different things and notice in our own way and part of finding a style is first understanding how you look at the world around you. A really simple example of this for me is that when I'm outside, I can't help but look really closely at everything around me. I love the process of being out on a walk and looking at the leaves, beach combing, finding shells, discovering lichen on a tree. This close-up studying is something that I've taken forward into a lot of my work and it's what informs my mark making and textures to this day. Maybe you have a habit, a way of interacting, with or looking at the world around you that might inform your own process in your painting. Now, if you're sitting here and thinking, I don't know the answers to some of these questions. For example, knowing how you see the world, that's a huge question. That might take a years or a lifetime. It's a really big thing. So do not worry at all. The beauty of painting itself as a process is that you can find the answers by doing the actual work. It might just come with time through practice and repetition and after some distance from the work that you've made, you might see some of these answers emerging naturally. I find many of these answers and keys to unlocking my own creative style through this balance and back and forth between thinking and asking very critical and conscious questions and then switching that part of my brain off and just working without too much thoughts or intention or worry and seeing what happens when I work thinking through doing. I think a creative style is something which can evolve quite naturally over time. You might look back on your past work and without realising it, have changed it because of where you are at in your life. Equally, you might be sitting in your work and wanting a very conscious and proactive change to happen. And in this case, it's about sitting down and studying and learning again, and then implementing that very deliberately back into the work. Either way, I think our work is always going to change. And that is something which is really exciting and to look forward to. If you're in the process of changing your style or you've recently taken a step forward in your work to develop and grow, I'd love to hear all about it down in the comments below, as I'm constantly looking for new ways to learn and grow and develop from other people too. If you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. I hope you've got a great week ahead of you and I'll see you outside.